If you live in California, then I am sure you have heard the term ADU being thrown around quite a bit, especially in recent years. So what exactly is it? How much does it cost? And if I want one, where do I even begin? Which is always my question. So today I'm going to be chatting with Florentine Christian of Sidekick Homes. And Sidekick Homes is an amazing company that helps to build ADUs from concept to finish. So if you have been considering buying a house and wanting to put an ADU on, or you already own a home and you wanna put an ADU on, then this is a conversation you will not want to miss. We go through quite a bit. So again, I am Carissa Wright, and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, come on, let's do it. Subscribe, please. New videos every week talking about the South Bay, home ownership, and all sorts of other fun activities and things happening here in the South Bay. So let's go ahead and dive on in. So today we are here with Florentine Christian of Sidekick Homes. Hi, Florentine. Hi, Carissa. Thank you for having me. Good to get Thank to you so much. Spend a little bit of time with you today, both of our busy schedules. I know. It's taken us a few weeks to get it on the calendar. A lot of rescheduling, but we made it happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, awesome. So Florentine works with Sidekick Homes, and I'm going to let you do a little debrief on what you guys do, how long you've been there, what's your title. Um, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about Sidekick Homes. You got it. So I am the founder and the owner actually of Sidekick Homes, and we primarily are an ADU design build company. We handle the process from beginning to end, and we always like to start off with an initial consultation just to make sure that we can do what we think we want to do on the property. And a lot of times people don't know for sure what their scope of work is, so they really want to understand what the parameters are going to be, um, maybe, you know, how different options might cash flow, or, you know, do we convert the garage, or do we build new? So we like to always start with a consultation before we start putting pen to paper and designing. Let's just let's just make a small investment before we make a big investment. So that's kind of our philosophy. We pretty much take people beginning to end through the entire process. Okay, awesome. So you guys do both. I mean, it sounds like, and I have a little bit of experience with your company, um, but I don't know everything. So you guys do the you know analysis of the property first. And then if the client gives the green light, you guys can also do the, the permits, the construction, everything. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Yep. Very finished, cool. Finished ADU, ready to move in. That's awesome. And um, how long have you guys been in business for? We launched in June of 2019. Okay. Um, and so, but we did our first design, we did our very first um, design client in February of 2020, right before the pandemic. And so it's been a really, really wild ride being a small, you know, budding business um, yeah. amidst, the, amidst the pandemic. I will say that. I'm sure it was perfect timing to be launching. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then what gave you the idea to launch this company? You know, it's really funny. I was actually at an event at the, at the time I was actually practicing real estate and I was a green realtor. And I went to this event that was, um, focused on building a, building a sustainable LA. Like they were focused on environmental sustainability, affordability. Like what do we want LA to look like when it comes to housing? And there was a lot of talk about legislation and how to, how, you know, how we can legislate in such a way that developers will do this or that or the other to kind of incentivize developers to develop affordable housing. And it was all fine, you know, but it was a lot of kind of like talking about what we, how can we get other people to do what we want them to do? And I, there was very little talk about this great legislation that had just passed the year before that basically opened the gates for everyone in California to be able to build a second unit on their property. And so I stood up in the middle, of, I don't know, two, 300 people. And I said, um, you know, hey, great that we're talking about this, you know, cool new legislation that we could pass, but we have this amazing piece of legislation that's already in place. And what we need is boots on the ground. I said, for so long, people have been punished for their illegal, um, you know, their illegal unit. They've gotten fines, violations. I said, we need to let people know this is possible. We need to get financing in place, you know, grant resources, whatever we can to make these affordable for people to build. I said, we need to train a workforce. We don't have a skilled labor to build all the homes that we could potentially be building. Um, I'm like, we need boots on the ground. And Carissa, I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I was expecting like a here, here, you know, or yeah. subject or something, but 
just that like awkward moment of silence. And then they went back to talking about, you know, like, how do we legislate these developers to do what we want them to do? And um, and I'm like, okay, well, lunch is coming up. I know I'm going to find my tribe, you know, at lunchtime, I'm going to find these people that want to get out there and build these ADUs. Yeah. And so lunchtime rolled around and like nothing, nothing. And I was like, who is going to build these ADUs? And look, I'm in a room of 300 people and no one's interested in this. Are you kidding me? Like what's going on here? And yeah. then I started thinking about, well, who is, what are the qualifications of that person? And I realized, you know, started thinking about my life and all of my life experience that have brought me up to this place. I started actually in construction with my dad. It was my first job. By the time I graduated high school, I had every I had experience with every aspect of new home building. Uh, that's amazing. Foundations and final finishes. It was like, I, that's what I was grew up in. I've worked in an architectural firm, engineering, construction supply, property management, lending. I mean, I've, I've real estate. I've done all the periphery. Um, you know, things that I'm like, so I just started thinking, I'm like, hmm, you know, and then I started doing the market analysis and thinking about what do I bring to this industry? Mm -hmm. And the thing that I really came upon is the client experience. I saw that that was something that was very much missing. There are people out there that'll come build a box in your backyard, but they are not necessarily asking questions about what is this unit going to do in your life? How is this solving yeah problem for your life or how is this setting your life up for something for years to come or generations to come um and so that was really what where i stepped in and said you know i think there's a real opportunity to give homeowners the the experience that they're seeking um and kind of bridge that gap between homeowner expectations and construction reality yeah yeah absolutely and i've i mean i've i know that you do a lot of networking with realtors um and it makes so much sense because ADUs are such a huge opportunity right now, but it's how, who do, who do we turn to? Who do we call? And I love that you guys are a one-stop shop and that you do, you know, go out to the property, give the evaluation of the property and the client is in the know right away. And your evaluations are so incredibly thorough. I mean, with the rent predictions and, you know, the cost of construction and how long is it going to take to make up that expense? So it's, I think a genius business model. Well, thank you. And and I also do have to say, I'm so grateful for realtors like yourself because you're taking it upon yourself to educate yourself because you know that you're the first point of contact. You well, are exactly, yeah. You're who, you're who homeowners are going to go to. They're going to reach out to their realtor and say, hey, I've got this idea. Who do you know? What do you know? How can you help yes. me with this? And so, you know, kudos to you for being that educated realtor. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, who's really making sure that you're a good resource for your clients. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's break it down backwards, I guess. We didn't even explain what an ADU is. So do you want to explain what an ADU is? Absolutely. And it is important to, to explain this because we do get requests to build things that are not ADUs, which yeah. might, might still be possible, um, but they won't be able to take advantage of all the wonderful concessions that the okay. That the law allows if what we're building is an ADU. So that's a really great question. So an ADU by definition, um, by you know, state of California is um it is a, a form of housing. So it's meant to, to house people, and it is on a property that already has a at least one primary residence. It could have a multi-residence property on it. So it's on a res, you know, property that allows for residential zoning, and it's basically a second, a second house. Um, it has to have four basic things, and that's kitchen, bathroom, sleeping quarters, and a separate entrance. So as okay. long as it has those things and it meets you know zoning requirements, it can be considered an accessory dwelling unit, accessory to the main, you know, accessory to the main unit. And Got right it. now, you know, the cool thing is almost I, I can't say every property, but it because uh, there are some properties that that we can't build on, but every city in the state right now has to allow these. And so pretty much people, you know, all over the state are able to build these second units. Yeah. And I think that's what creates such an amazing opportunity. You know, whether it's you have family that's going to be coming and staying regularly, or you want the rental income. Yeah. Um, I think there's so much opportunity and such a great value add to any property that you can put it on to for sure. Totally, totally. Well, so, even, like during the pandemic, you know, when we had so many people in um, senior living centers that were, mm -hmm. COVID was a really big threat. People were wanting yeah. to take their family members out of those senior living centers. And ADUs are a great 
option for that, right? And plus, yeah. it's more affordable. I, I don't know. How, do you know how much they charge? I've been hearing like ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month, like crazy, crazy, insane, cost. insane. I was, I, I literally, because I was just having this conversation, looking at a senior living facility, and it was like the base six thousand dollars a month, and I'm like, how that's do crazy. people afford this? It's insane. I know. And that's not like your amazing neighborhood in a big, huge, gorgeous place. I mean, that's like a no. room, right? That's yeah, yeah. That's like the base, the base level, which is so crazy. So yeah. it makes sense. The ADUs and bring your family closer to you, and you know you're having little expense with it. Exactly. Yep. Now I did. I said a few benefits. What I think are benefits of ADUs. I mean, any other ones that you can think of off the top of your head? I and the other. Thing to like tie into this is are there any like tax benefits or you know anything like that with the cities that we're seeing yeah that's that's a really good question um so there are you know one other scenario that we've seen you know i talked a little bit about elderly family member the other one we're seeing sometimes is adult children so maybe people graduating college it gives people a chance to get on their feet and save up to be able to buy their first home yeah so that's another thing that we're really seeing outside of the rental income so, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of awesome uses that people are using it for. When it comes to taxes, there are, um, it's not so much a tax break right now for ADUs, but what I will say is that it doesn't cause a reassessment on your property. And we get that question quite a bit. Is this gonna trigger a reassessment? Yeah. You know, I don't wanna lose my tax basis because I've owned this house for 40 years. Um, so in that case, it does not trigger a reassessment. You will be assessed an improvement for the amount, you know, for the value of the ADU for the assumed. Okay. Value. Um, so there okay. will be an increase, but if you if you track that against, if you add, you know, what would financing costs be plus tax plus insurance, you know, basically all your your monthly expenses, you're still money ahead from what you would be renting elsewhere. Or if you're renting it out, you're still cash flowing in almost all of LA County. So they're still pretty much, um, you know, financially really a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, I mean, from my side of it, it's such a great selling point when you have a house. I mean, people love ADUs and I'm seeing a lot of new construction where they're just naturally putting it in. Like they're adding, you know, the granny flat or whatever automatically yeah. because so many people have the need for it. And obviously we have a housing shortage in California um, and it's a great way to increase housing. Absolutely. And it's a great way for people to be able to afford to live in the neighborhoods they grew up in. Quite honestly, you know, it's yeah. like people are priced out of living in the areas where they went to school or wanting to send their kids to the same schools they went to. Like people are really being priced out. And, you know, it's 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 fun. We've even seen situations where, um, you know, the maybe it's an older couple that had this big house to raise their kids in. But now they're empty nesters and they want to downsize. Mm -hmm. Where do you downsize to? Where do, yeah. where do you go, right? This is your community. You've got your grocery store and your bank and your church and your local restaurants and everything around you that you love. You don't necessarily want to uproot and go somewhere else. Well, if you can build a, your own new house in the backyard, single floor, you know, make it um, universal design so that if you have health challenges or mobility challenges later in life, if you're already mm -hmm. set up, ready to go, um, and let your kids move into the main house or rent it out and have a great retirement income. Yeah. Yeah, that's such a, a great idea. Yeah. And it makes it, it is so true. I mean, especially in the area I am in the South Bay, I mean, housing has become so expensive. And a lot of people who did grow up here, they just can't afford it anymore. And yeah. so, you know, the ADU brings a really great option, especially I mean, it seems to me, and maybe I'm wrong, with ADUs, it doesn't have to be just like a studio or one bedroom. Can you actually do multi-room ADUs? Absolutely. You can do two, three bedroom. And it depends on the local jurisdiction you're in. Um, but okay. typically if you're gonna do typically if you um you know want to do a two or three bedroom, you can usually go a thousand to twelve hundred square feet. Like uh, a whole nother house. I mean, house. That's crazy. Yeah. Sometimes when, when I tell people about ADUs, they're like, oh, you mean like those little tiny homes? And it's like, well, yeah, you could make it really tiny if you wanted to, but but I think 1,200 square feet is a pretty, that's a pretty decent size house. Good <laughs> size, absolutely. That, I wouldn't consider that tiny. Yeah. So. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and then with those, you said that it can be different types of properties. And I did just have this with you. I had a duplex where we had the evaluation that two more ADUs could be put on the property. 
But for, I mean, are you seeing that it has to be, I would imagine it's mostly single families that you guys are looking at for the most part with the properties probably can't really add it on to like a townhouse or a condo. Um, actually, well, it, it depends. Um, okay. Depends on, on the property itself and sure. how the, maybe how the, um, how the property is actually owned, but I do know that HOAs have to allow ADUs. So they, they HOA can't necessarily preclude you from doing an ADU. We haven't done Interesting. one. Yeah. We haven't done one. Um, well, actually I take that back. We, there is one that we're doing, um, in Rancho Palos Verdes. It is in an HOA and that it was very easy to clear that. Um, okay. but possibly I would say let's, we would probably need to take a look at the, yeah. We'd have to do a, an evaluation of the property. Right, we'll do, we'll do an evaluation and see what's possible. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. But you, know, um, you mentioned though, but like you, you were looking at a duplex and multifamily properties, usually you can do more than one ADU on a yeah. multifamily property. There's a, um, I, I would just came from a property right now. It's a mixed use actually. Um, in the city of Long Beach, there's three units on it. And then there's a really cute little retail space in the front that we're going to convert into an accessory dwelling unit. And, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And not all cities allow in mixed use, not all cities will allow you to convert commercial sure. to residential. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes the entitlements can get a little messy, but. But Long Beach is pretty, pretty open to it, if it makes sense. And in this case, sure. it does. It's, you know, the rest of the property is really already residential. So it really does make sense. So, you know, so that's a fun one. Or, you know, I was actually just talking to an investor friend of mine who they're looking at buying a 36 unit apartment complex. Um, and we figure they can probably do about eight ADUs on that property. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. So there's, there are definitely are opportunities to do these outside of just single family properties. I mean, it seems to me that it almost makes sense, especially if you're buying a property to just have you guys come out and do an evaluation if you are looking for a value add opportunity because opportunities are there and you may not even know it. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we actually do that quite a bit. Um, you know, we always say, call us, you know, right when you go into escrow so we have time to get the research done within your inspection contingency. But yeah, that's, we get a lot of those calls, um, where realtors, especially if the client they're like, that's an important thing to them. Like, sure. That's one of their requirements for a property is they want to be able to do an ADU definitely let's make sure that you can do the thing that you want to do before you go through the whole process. And, well, and that's huge. I mean, the fact that you guys come out during the escrow process is amazing because a lot of times when you want to have certain things done, you have to wait till you own the house. And mm -hmm. so that's such a great opportunity for clients, for buyers, for prospective homeowners to you know be educated before they make any real final decisions with the property. And I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And with that, we didn't even talk about, I mean, I know you guys have extremely low, I mean, in my opinion, I think it's very worth every single penny to have the evaluation done. So what is your guys' assessment fee or evaluation, whatever you call it? Yeah, usually for single family property, it's usually a $300 assessment. Um, for Carissa, you know, any of your clients that you send our way, we love to take care of them and give them a, you know, a $250 rate. And so, you know, I would always say, you know, make sure when you call us up that you let us know that Carissa sent you so that we yeah. can, so that we can make sure that, um, you know, we give you that your, your, uh, $50 off credit. We can also say thank you to Carissa as well. Yeah. That's, yeah. and that's great. I mean, I just had one done for a client and $250, you come out. You, I mean, actually, can you go through the whole process? Because I, I'm yeah. so impressed by the evaluation of the property. And I think it's such a huge selling point for you guys. Sure. Yeah. So we, we actually do all the research in advance. We, we do things like we, you know, we confirm what jurisdiction it's in. Sometimes the city name is not actually who we submit plans to. You might, the property might say city of Hawthorne and really it's, you know, LA County or LA city or yeah. something more different. So we always confirm the jurisdiction. We do all the, um, you know, look at what the ordinance says, make sure that the local jurisdictions ordinance is in compliance with the state law. It's a really big thing. A lot of times these local jurisdictions inadvertently have things in their um, ordinances that actually don't meet state law. And so we get to encourage them to change, change their law um, to open things up for clients. And then we, um, so we want to look at, you know, what can be built. We look at the local zoning, look at things like the setbacks, the height requirements. Is there, um, are there development standards such as floor area ratio, lot coverage, et cetera. We'll see, are you in a methane zone, a liquefaction zone, coastal zone, hillside, 
special grading area, all of those things that could trigger additional costs. Um, and then when we're on site, we're also looking at the property itself. So people a lot of times want to get an idea of well, what is this going to cost? And it really depends a lot on the current condition. So we'll look if there's um, a building that you would like to convert or if there's an unpermitted unit that you what you're thinking that you might want to get permitted as an ADU, we'll, we'll look and see as much as we can about that structure to try and give an idea of what are the things that we can see that will likely need to be done. And then another really big thing that a lot of people don't think about is we check out the utilities. Um, yeah. Because if you have to upgrade or upsize existing utilities, that's extra cost. And when people say to me, so what does an ADU cost? Well, it depends. It depends, you know, of course, on what what your design standards are and what are we designing for you. But it but it also depends a lot on the what what's the environment that we're working in. Are we having to remove trees? Are we having to take up concrete? Um, when we're taking your utilities back, are we having to dig really big deep trenches? Are we having to dig through concrete? I mean, there's there's a lot of different things that that a lot that of variables. To what does it cost exactly? Yeah. Coming out on site lets us look at some of those things and, and let people know if there's anything that we see might be issues. There's, um, you know, power poles sometimes can can alter where you can build, how high you can build. So we're, we're looking at that. And then we also, as you had mentioned earlier, we also like to look at the local rents and run some cash flow calculations for people based on what they're hoping or intending to do with the property. Maybe if someone's question is, should I do a studio, a one bedroom, a two bedroom? What makes the most sense? We might run those scenarios. Or if somebody yeah. knows exactly what they want, but they're like, kind of what's the low end, high end? We can kind of give, you know, pricing models for that. Because at the end of the day, people want to know if they're going to rent it out, they want to know, is it going to cash flow? If it's not going to cash flow and it's not going to make sense, then we don't want to do it. Um, and then the second question is if they're not going to cash flow, if they're going to have a family member living there, they're probably trying to save money. So we want to mm -hmm. say, instead of net cash flow, we say, well, what is your net savings? What are you saving by having this ADU rather than renting somewhere locally? Yeah, so that's, and it's such a thorough, like assessment evaluation of the property. And I yeah. think that's amazing. It really does allow someone to see the full picture. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And we're, you know, we're really also trying to help people zero in on their scope of work. Because um, yeah. we can't like, you know, we can't really even start putting costs together until we understand what are you wanting to what are you wanting to create? And so the consultation is also to make sure that you can do what you want to do. But it's yeah. also intended to really help people hone in on their scope of work based on their property, their budget and their their needs. What can actually be created? Yeah, um, I know you can't give like an accurate cost, but I mean, is there like an average you see price per square foot, anything that you can like ballpark? Sure. Um, and, and I always give this caveat, you know, every property is different. So before, yeah. before I, before I launch it, I'll just say there were two, we had two properties. It's been, a, it's been some time ago now. We had two um, properties that were both attached ADUs, almost identical in size. And when we priced them out, one was like twice the cost of the other for, for a myriad of reasons. So I just, yeah. Say that is my caveat, um, but yes, I can kind of give you some general. So if you're doing a garage conversion and that garage is in really great sh structural shape and there's not much we're going to need to do to it, like we had one in Westchester where the garage was just built a couple of years ago. Um, so situation like that, the, the garage will probably add about $40,000 worth of value. So that garage conversion should start probably around $120,000. Okay. Um, a new build right now is probably starting closer to about 160. Now, could it be less? It could be. Could it be more? Definitely. Right. Yeah. Um, every property is a little bit different, but that's kind of what we're seeing in terms of starting costs that people should be prepared for. You know, as you're as you're pay, as you're thinking about bring, not just the build costs, but bringing those utilities in, and you know, what are the complete costs for my project? Yeah. And with that, I mean, you said something earlier about when your original business plan was financing so are there construction loans do you have people that can help with that what how does that look yeah so there um absolutely we've got great lenders that are that are you know specialists at working with people who are wanting to do an adu um okay. typically 
you are looking at standard financing. So it's cash out, refi, home equity, line of credit, second mortgage, or a renovation loan. Um, right now, since interest rates are a bit higher, it's what, November 2022. So because interest rates are a bit higher, people are leaning more on the second mortgages because they don't want to refi their low interest first. Um, but I have to I have to give a little plug for an amazing opportunity. I don't know how long it's going to be around, but there is a $40,000 grant opportunity right now um, for mid to low income housing uh, uh, homeowners. And what that means is in L.A. County, if you make less than one hundred and eighty thousand dollars, you probably are going to qualify for this grant. Oh, um, and I'm hearing that it, it can it doesn't necessarily have to be joint income. It could be if one member of the household makes less than one hundred and eighty thousand, they could qualify for this forty thousand dollar grant. Um, that's huge. I mean, that's that's uh, you know we're, we're always trying to solve this homelessness, affordable housing problem, and like that makes sense that some yeah. of the money should be going to something like that. That's fantastic. It absolutely does, and and. You know, the reason I think it's been so helpful for a lot of our clients is because most people, even though the bulk of their financing is probably going to come from some form of an equity loan, sure. most, most people are using a patchwork approach. Most people are not able to finance 100% of their ADU based on the equity of their home. So usually mm -hmm. that, that might cover, say, 60 to 90%. The other 10 okay. to 40% is coming from... Um, other liquid assets, savings account, stocks, retirement account, or borrowing or receiving a gift from a friend or a family member. So that's people are usually pulling from different places to finance. So when there's this forty thousand dollar grant, it's pretty substantial to help people out. It's um it's through Cal HFA, and they had a hundred million dollar block of finance or funding for this. Um, that's awesome is like 25 i think there were 2500 grants that were going to be given away as of last month they had they'd already allocated half of those funds so i've been telling people if you're hearing this and this interests you um go to the cal hfa website and look up adu grant and get the process started asap because when the funds are gone they're gone um got it i have been petitioning for more money i a couple weeks ago i went to the board meeting of cal hfa's their monthly board meeting and i sat in and waited till the very end to the public comments and advocated yeah. <laughs> advocated um for more resources to be allocated but absolutely you know when when they're gone they're gone so i've been telling people get in there and apply because so far every one of my clients who's applied has gotten the grant that's awesome. And can they apply like before they've even started the process or is what do you, I mean, if you know. Yeah, they can apply before they've started the process midway through. Uh, the grant is supposed to be for pre-construction costs, which typically is your getting your plans, your site surveys, uh, all of your the costs you're going to pay to the city. It can be for your utility hookup costs. Um, there are so so it's tricky to get construction costs covered, but we have been able to help clients still access that funding, um, even if they already have, a, you know, they already have plans approved and they're ready to go into construction, we're still helping them access those the monies too. So, yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. With that, how long are you seeing for like the, I mean, every city I know is going to be different, but like how long does the process take with like permitting, um, you know, that phase to construction, construction to finish? I mean, any rough timelines yeah. on those things? Sure. Yeah. So typically the design process, as long as we're not doing a ton of back and forth or we don't need a lot of feasibility, but the straight design process is usually a couple of months. Um, okay. Then we submit to the city. The shortest approval time we've been seeing is just under two months. Um, the longest we're seeing is over a year. So it can vary greatly. And, you yeah. know, typically advise people based on their jurisdiction. If they're unfortunately in one of those jurisdictions can take a really long time or if they're in one that's going to go a little bit faster. Um, so right now, for example, city of LA is one of the fastest, as long as there's not a lot of clearances, there's a lot of clearances that, you know, we have gotten slowed down on a few projects, but, um, if, if we're not having to, to, um, go through a lot of clearances, usually we can get through pretty quick in city of LA. Some of the longer ones right now, um, LA County, it takes a very, very long time. City of Inglewood, um, both of those, you're probably looking at close to a year to get okay. your get your plans approved. If you're in a coastal zone, that, that will add considerable time and cost. Um, the fees, are, I think we we did one in the San Pedro area and just the coastal zone fee alone was about $10,000. Wow. 
to paint. Oh, interesting. In addition to all of the other plan check permitting, you yeah. know, utility connection, et cetera, that uh, coastal fee was was pretty substantial. And it and it takes us substantially more work as well to get it through the process. Very time consuming. And is that through the Coastal Commission or it's just a, a city like coastal fee? Um, so every city is a little bit different. Um, okay. Probably the, the, the easiest Coastal Commission process we went through was with City of Manhattan Beach, surprisingly. They oh. were, yeah, it was, it was um, you know, it still took a, took, took a little bit of time. It didn't take a year. It took, you know, closer to about three or four months. Uh, it. But it was a pretty straightforward process. I think maybe there are smaller jurisdictions, so maybe it was yeah. a, little bit, a little bit easier to work our way um, through with them. But um, yeah, so it's just, you know, every city's every city's a little bit different. Totally different. With that, um, I mean, you guys have so many parts of your company. Are people able to kind of like pick and choose? Like, can they have you come out and do the evaluation of the property and then create the plans and then use their own contractor or, you know, kind of mix and match a little bit? Yeah, you know, we have historically offered that. We're moving more and more into a design build. And I'll okay. be honest with you, Carissa, why that is, is because a lot of times we're losing money on the design. We we charge a flat fee. Uh, most design firms will charge a fee, but then they'll have extra dollar per hour for this or extra dollar per hour for that or yeah. um, much to print out plans. And we just do a flat fee so that people know up front what they're paying. But if things take a really, really long time or we have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops with the city, we're putting a out a lot of back and forth on a back and forth. Or we've had, you know, there was one city we had to print out three sets of plans and there was like four different times we had to take everything in and the plan sets that they wanted were really thick. It was just, it was like hundreds of dollars in printing plans, you know? Yeah. Um, and so we're, we are honest. I'm going to be really, really transparent. We are moving in a direction. We're really wanting to do the design build so that yeah. I we lose money on the design we're not you know we're we're not losing money we at least have yeah. the to look forward to um yeah. so we're moving in that direction but all depending on what what jurisdiction it is it's in I, you know i i may entertain it i probably would take that on a case by case basis okay that makes yeah. sense yeah um with the adus i know that sometimes when you're you know adding more housing you have to take into consideration parking and things like that. Are there anything, I mean, do any cities make you have more parking or any other considerations like that that you can think of? Yeah. And, you know, parking was one of the big limitations initially, yeah. which many people from being able to build. And at this point in time, uh, most people are going to be exempt from parking requirements for their ADU. Um, and that's huge. Yeah. The biggest exemption that most people qualify for is their half mile walking distance from transit. So okay. that's that's going to be the big one. And then um, let's see. Also, if you convert the garage, you don't have to replace the parking. So that's, that's, another, that's another bonus for people. That's really opened up a lot of doors for some folks. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I actually think I've kind of gone through all of my questions. Are there anything extra that you have to add, um, anything you think I missed, anything that, you know, if someone is looking to have an ADU or has questions about it that you can add on to this? Yeah, I was just, I was thinking earlier, I thought I, I had something, I thought, oh, that would be a fun little golden nugget at the end. Um, but <laughs> how about now that you put me on the spot. But if, once I put you on the spot, of course. Once you put me on the spot, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, what was I going to mention? Um, I'll, I'll just mention this. I'll, I'll just say one of the things that I love about ADUs is the way that they really work to, to reinforce community. And what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of times when we think about apartment complexes and people who are going to rent a property, for example, um, a lot of times the people, you know, pe uh, people's a big portion of their income goes towards rent. And a lot of times the person who owns that apartment complex doesn't necessarily live in the community. So people are paying all this money towards rent and then that money leaves the community and goes somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I really do love about ADUs, especially as rental property, is that it's keeping it's keeping money in communities. It's keeping money circulating in communities where people live. So when money comes into the community via people's income, 
um, and then stays in the community through rent, um, you know, it, it, I feel like creates communities that can grow and build and yeah. have kind of that, you know, economic sustainability. So that's something I don't hear talked a lot about. Um, yeah, no, that's a great point. But it's, but it's definitely one of the things that I think makes ADUs really special. The other thing I will say is one of the, can I, can I mention a challenge? A challenge yeah. in the industry. Um, yeah. One challenge we're having is just access to really good, um, qualified ADU home builders. And so I am encouraging anybody that's interested in getting into the trades to, um, you know, to think about being an ADU builder or even a tradesperson. Right now, our plumbers are making far more than our architects are. Um, wow. Because they're in such demand. They're in such yeah. demand. So all of the, we have need for people in all of the trades. And we also have need um, for people that want to be builders and developers. And in fact, I'm, you know, working with um, a group of people right now, really trying to bring some um, workforce development, maybe a, a small developer boot camp or small developer incubator um, to Southern California so that we can develop ADU builders. Um, so if anybody's interested in career opportunity as well, you know, we're really wanting to create that also. That's awesome. So if someone's interested in that program or, you know, anything else, how can they get a hold of you? Thank you. Our our website is sidekick.homes. So there's no dot com. It's just www.sidekick.homes. Um, cool. Our contact information is there, phone number, email. You can schedule an appointment to talk to somebody. Uh, we make it pretty easy for people. Perfect. And I'll also put all of your contact info in the comments below the video. Um, and I think that's it for me. Thank you again so much for taking the time. I know how busy you are. And I think this information has been, I know it's really helpful for me. So I'm sure somebody who didn't even know what an ADU is at the beginning got a lot of information. And obviously I fully endorse your company. I think it's absolutely like one of a kind, amazing, such a genius thing and always will keep recommending you to all of my clients. Well, I appreciate it. And again, Chris, I just have to say thank you for you know your dedication, for educating yourself and educating your sphere, educating your clients and people in your community. Because uh, these things are such an amazing opportunity right now. Yeah. I, it's a great service that you're offering, getting this information out there. So thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, well, I'm sure we'll be talking very soon, doing another evaluation of a property, hopefully. So awesome. thank you again, and I'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thank you. Bye.